Michter's 10-year single barrel bourbon. What is it? <laughs> We're going to find out on this episode of Savor the Burn. Well, 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 we have found ourselves with a flagship bourbon here on Savor the Burn. Thank you for watching. Hit follow, hit like, leave us a comment, all the things. This is a straight unicorn. This is a unicorn bourbon. For for me, mm -hmm. specifically, this is a holy grail that I have been trying my damnedest Two with uh, at least the last year. Last year. And there's been a couple times in that year that I almost pulled the trigger on a second market price for it because second I because I price. wanted it so bad. We'll talk about that price here in a minute. But but I held off and patience it, is a virtue and it paid off. Yep. Yes, sir, it did. Yes, sir, it did. <laughs> As we talked about in the previous episode, month or so, month and a half at this point uh, mm -hmm. ago, we did a tasting down at Red X in Riverside, mm -hmm. hosted by Michter's, and they had a handful of rare and allocated bottles available for you to, the, they were going to raffle off mm -hmm. for a chance to buy. And, and they had all kinds of stuff. I mean, they, they had they had the regular Michter's bottles uh, that you can get just They had the anywhere. Toasted Barrel, they toasted had bar some bomb cast or they had the no, bomb, Bomberger. Yep. Bomberger, bomb, Bomberger. Sure. Please send your hate mail info at savertheburn.com. And Shanks. Uh, Shanks. They had Shanks. Shanks Sour uh, Mash. Which both of those are related to Michter's yep. uh, in the history. Yep. If you saw the last episode, then you know it. And when we signed up for that tasting, they only had, uh, I think they had about eight different bottles on there. One of them yeah. was the 10 year rye. Right. We showed up and there was a 10 year bourbon on the table. There mm -hmm. was some toasted barrels. There yep. was a whole bunch of other stuff. And the I'm other sitting stuff there. That had nothing to do with Mictors. The uh, what well, is that, 121 proof uh, Woodford they, Reserve. They pulled those out after the fact. The, the uh, thing, the thing that was, right. the thing that was super cool about that was, um, I they the, at least the online registration they had it listed as 45 available reservations. Mm -hmm. I think it ended up being somewhere around 30 total. Okay. But but still, if there were 30 people that showed up there, the math in my head is like okay. There's two of us. They've got eight bottles, eight, ten bottles that they're they're gonna raffle off. Mm -hmm. Odds are good. Yeah. What was cool about Red X was as those bottles kind of went and they were pulling numbers and people were coming up and picking what they wanted. There was a lot of people getting what they wanted. They started setting some other stuff out there. So there was a handful of Blends. There was a Caribou Crossing. There was the uh, the batch proof uh, Woodford Reserve 121. That's the, one. That's the one. Yeah, they they put a handful of those out there, which we already had. You had a chance we to did. get one of those. Mm -hmm. um, but I passed on it because I wanted the experience. But that documented. that entire tasting, I'm sitting there just staring the the, yeah. the ten not this bottle the, just, the the ten year bottle down. I wanted yeah. that so bad. I fucking it. The and <laughs> and then and Michter's brought a toasted barrel, mm -hmm. I think it was the toasted barrel rye, uh, out as a giveaway. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when when you showed up and you registered, you reached your hand in the bowl, you picked a, a little number ball. Yeah. They put it in the little squirrel cage, like a bingo type thing. And so when it came time for it, you know, they started off the evening after the tasting with giving the the giveaway away so they mm -hmm. spun the thing around they reached in there they pulled this number and uh this lady up front all excited she's yeah. like oh my gosh she, she runs up there she gets her free bottle yeah she's about to sit back down and they you know and, and i'm thinking okay she, she got something they're mm -hmm. going to discard her number apparently because that was a giveaway yeah, giveaway number they put her number back in the thing spun it around and sure as shit they pulled her number as the second one up it was the first one for the raffle mm. and she made a beeline for the 10-year bourbon mm -hmm. and i mean 
I'm not complaining by any means because the next number that they pulled was my number, number 91, yep. and I came home with a 10-year rye. Mm -hmm. So super excited about that. You fast forward, you heard the the whole story about our Michter's experience. Mm -hmm. The end of that experience, I found myself with this beautiful bottle in mm -hmm. hand and the Holy Grail unicorn that I have been in search of for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and I say say this this last year, I've actually wanted this bottle way longer than that. Yeah. But yeah. I say the last year because last year when I did the Mixers tour for the first time, mm -hmm. it was the last tour of a Saturday. Our tour guide was a retired guy that now does tours as his job because he's retired. Mm -hmm. What a great job of that has to be. The love. You know, you get to drink bourbon and t and talk about bourbon. Yep, and share bourbon with unsuspecting victims. So not knowing that they're about to fall in love with the dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we we had our our board uh, with all of our tastings on there, and then as we're finishing up, I noticed there's another tray behind him, mm -hmm. and he had a little quarter. I don't even think it was a quarter ounce. I think it may have even been like those little plastic ounce. temple cups. Yeah, I mean it was like that much. It it was just enough to piss you off, <laughs> but the taste of that was just so incredible it blew my mind to the point where i had not stopped thinking about it this entire last year i wanted one of these bottles so bad mm. the second market price on this bottle is 500 bucks cost prohibitive for somebody like me it's way cost you know i i've i've seen the best price i've ever seen on it was still right at 400. So you know, it, you know, it, 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 MSRP on it is is two hundred dollars. So which is already expensive, but we, right, we've easily paid two hundred for for other bottles. So given the I have given the opportunity, uh, I had to seize the day. So thank you, Vicky, mm -hmm. for making that happen. I mm -hmm. very very appreciative. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, you do that. Is there anything you want me to read? Yeah, go for it. What do we got here? That's some thick wax. All right, Michter's 10-year-old single-barrel bourbon whiskey uh, from uh, right there in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, distilled at Michter's, of course. It's a 10-year... Pause. It's a nice... It's a nice pop. Uh, the Cooperage says, uh, Fire charred, new American white oak barrels. Otherwise, it can't be bourbon. Uh, coming in at 94.4 proof. That's yeah. a nice pour. I like it. Yeah, so the their standard US one bourbon is ninety one point four. Mm hmm That's good. I think you need a little more. Okay. Just a touch. Don't have to argue with him. Dude, that color. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Um yeah, the the, the standard US one bourbon is ninety one point four. So this this is up a little bit from there. And don't forget too, Mictors puts everything in the barrel at 103 proof. Mm -hmm. That's way lower than near everybody else says. There's mm -hmm. a couple I think out there that do low proof uh, barrel entry, Yeah, but 103, I mean, you think about some of the whiskeys we've had and 103 is barely hot <laughs> now <laughs> on some of these. Now it is. Yeah. Um, Especially when you're buying more than like a 15, to thirty dollar bottle, and when we when we just did that uh, single barrel cash strength, that one was only one hundred and ten point two. Yeah, that still doesn't seem very high. But if you think about, it, well, it went into the barrel at one hundred and three. Yeah, it had some time to proof up. It proofed up a little bit, and it's good. And you can see one leg out here coming from the back of the neck all the way down the shoulder. Ninety four point nice. four. That's not really. I mean, that's less than ten proof. Mm -hmm. off of what cast strength would be mm -hmm. at this age. So it goes on to say here, mature in age and truly exceptional in quality, Michter's 10-year single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon has earned its place as an enduring favorite of the most discerning whiskey connoisseurs. The best American whiskey, according to Food and Wine magazine, our 10-year single barrel bourbon represents the culmination of over a decade of patient aging and specifically chosen new charred American white oak barrels. Look at the color. Well, you, that you said color. Something. I mean, that is that, like that, a red amber. I mean, it is. I mean, that color is second to none. I mean, it's that is beautiful. 
picking up anything on the nose yet? Oh, that, yeah. So it, for the nose, oh, wow. I got a wow on the nose. We I don't got a wow on the nose. We don't have color in our rating system, but <laughs> if it was, yeah, we don't have this color color's or, a five all day long. Or second nose. <laughs> So color, dark amber, we called it. Nose, we should expect big and bold, dark toffee and caramel. I, I would yep. definitely say that. Bold is the right way to put it. Dark, rich, sweetness. I mean, the, the crazy it's thing a is... a caramel bomb. It's definitely a caramel bomb. There's no ethanol burn on the nose, but you can tell that there is a Kentucky hug waiting to happen mm -hmm. in this glass. Mm -hmm. Rich and sweet. What else would you say here? Uh, getting anything grains? Corn? I think that's corn sweetness. Corn and maybe a little bit of that barley. There, there's so much corn sweetness on the nose. I'm not, not, picking, I'm, up I'm not picking up any rye. This has got to be a really corn forward bourbon oh my god yeah like it, every 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 note i mean this is this is more like you know how, how we talked the about legs, man. the uh uh the fort nelson reserve it uh it, it only had a few things on the nose but everything was like you know heightened mm -hmm. this is even more so uh but maybe that's, that's because this is a a 14 year or you know closer to 15 year uh 10 year bourbon yeah you know and, and that's the thing that 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 uh raven told us too was you know their their 10 year comes with it a 10 year age statement mm -hmm. but their master distiller does not let anything leave the barrel go into a bottle yeah. until, until he's ready. pleased with it yeah uh, which until it's not, ready which is very unlike other distillers which means that at 10 years it might not be ready, so be ready. it's going to sit a little bit. Dr. No said no. Yep. R Raven <laughs> seemed to think when, when I got the 10-year rye, she seemed to think that that was probably closer to a 15-year. Oh, so it was the rye, not the bourbon. It was, it was the closer rye. to the 15. Okay, so yeah. what, what was what was the, you don't I mean, know? I mean, this was... The uh, color looks 15. Uh, Miss Vicky... Uh, disappeared for a few minutes and came back with a very with something that not, wasn't available. A, a very discreet all black box that had no markings whatsoever on the outside of it. That nose is amazing. <laughs> this nose is amazing, y'all. Let's get it on the palate. Cheers, sir. That was a cool sound. That's like summer sweet tea. That is, there's light rye. Oh, that finish, my God, it's like honeycomb. There's honey all over that. Ooh. Butterscotch? Yeah, veins dilated. Honeycomb. <laughs> <laughs> honeycomb. <laughs> Morph into a bear in front of, oh. <laughs> That was kind of like a Teen Wolf type of Ooh. moment here. <laughs> you you growled a little. <laughs> <laughs> Golly! All right, so uh, I'm not going to get on, on on the rating yet, but I got to go. Uh, the the tastes that we're getting. It says here in your notes uh, on the palate, we should expect charred oak, maple syrup, vanilla, a burst of honey, caramel, okay. and more vanilla. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I've got yeah vanilla, caramel burst of honey mm. oh my god <laughs> right <laughs> fucking hell that didn't take long jesus tap dance of christ right so we said a little bit of rye just a touch touch the finish my god honeycomb the the actual honey not the fucking breakfast cereal this is more vanilla is that cherry yes cherry on the finish yep. like maybe cherry coat cherry mm. just cherry no like cherry cherry soda not cherry cola but cherry soda which is a different experience do you do you have you had much no it's just cherry it's just cherry it's like it's like a cherry cordial <clears> hmm <throat> 
Oh, what does the note say? Finish, long and pleasant finish, yep, with an air of smoked wood and aged oak. I, I honestly didn't pick up on any any oakiness out of this out of this i mean i'm halfway through it there's no burn at all on this thing man no 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 there, this there's is, no there's no burn there's there's the bite burn whatever of the rye this is on the dessert. palate this is dessert whiskey i mean this is i'll cheers that again fucking hell this is amazing i can't believe how smooth that is at 94.4 so maybe that explains mm. why it's you know smooth but the the flavor my god uh yeah two hundred dollar bottle uh we haven't gotten into the bottle presentation we we started to talk about it i think on the on the last episode but on this one here the labeling you get like the regular you know oval shaped mm -hmm. maker's label on the front and a square patch of label on the back um, once again, you do get a, uh, a, a neck label that gives you the barrel number, but what you don't normally get is your cork has been, uh, what is this? Black, like a black wood. Yeah, it's a black wood cork. So you can't really see because it's been dipped in wax. Um, uh, natural cork. Uh, the bottle is, uh, shouldered. Uh, it's like a, uh, what would you call this? Like a wide... Uh, a wide shouldered flask. Yep. Uh, yep. A rounded, rounded, rounded shouldered mm -hmm. flask. I, I would say somewhere between a, sh a, a shouldered flask bottle and a wine bottle uh, mm -hmm. style. I don't know what this means, but and then the punt is relatively non-existent. But, but look how base, thick that is. The base on that yeah, is so is, much class. I mean, that's that's like stripper heel thick. <laughs> you know, and I I love the way that they do a nice clean edge on the 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 wax dip on there yeah i, yeah, I think yeah. i think it just has a nice classic clean look to there i love the look but, of of makers we talked about that before with the with the you know drip going down but yeah so this last this last trip i learned that the maker's drip mm -hmm. is actually trademarked it's a trademark thing yeah no other distillery is allowed to let the wax drip and i didn't know that until you said that otherwise Not guess, even one guess who's coming after you yeah <laughs> so I, I would test my luck with like a single drip right which I, I, as a designer and someone who does brand and, yeah. and that I, I think that's cool and i appreciate that but i was just like wow that's that's genius mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on on their trademark part it. to to trademark it but I don't. I don't know if I would have ever thought to trademark that. You know, they are known for for the red wax dip, but the actual dripping down the bottle, yeah, is actually part of the trademark. And as a result of that, that is why you don't see anyone else that lets the wax drip. There's mm -hmm. plenty other bottles you don't really out see there. Anybody else with that that shape of a bottle either? Right. I mean, you look at the Booker's. Mm -hmm. Or the little book, those are wax dip. They've wax got a dip. ribbon uh, on the neck that then is wax dip, but the wax is kind of tapered off. There's mm -hmm. no drips to it. Mm -hmm. And so there's plenty of other wax dipped bottles out there, but I hadn't really paid attention and thought about the fact that Makers is the only one that actually drips down there, and that's because mm -hmm. they own that trademark. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. What did uh, your sister and Tim? They sent us a video, uh, like for their anniversary. They 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 dipped their bottle and they said like they, they did the forty six at the end is like keep on waxing. What 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 the hell did <laughs> something they say? Like, something like I keep on like, dipping. Keep on dipping. That's what they said. I'm yeah, like, oh my yeah, god. For their uh, you guys are crazy. For their wedding anniversary, uh, and I'm blanking on what year this was. Faith, leave it's it in a while. The, leave it in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, leave leave your hate in the comments, please. <laughs> in front of God and everybody. But for, but you know they were uh, they got married on Valentine's Day, so their anniversary yeah. is February fourteenth, uh, and they spent uh, it on the the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, and their anniversary bottle that they decided to do was at Makers. Mm -hmm. They did the tour, and they did a forty six, dip your own, so. Cast strength straight from the the barrel. Dip their own forty six, which 
changed our view of makers. If it wasn't for 46, I don't know if we would want anything to do with <laughs> makers as heavy as this poor as I kind of want another one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'd, I'd save that enthusiasm for a little bit later. Vicky? Because we still have some bottles to go through. Vicky, I'm uh, going to need to come back to Louisville. Yes. <laughs> did they have, did, how many of these did they have? Uh, she disappeared down oh, in their basement. That's right. It's that it wasn't even available. Golly. Yeah. She came back in a solid black box, mm -hmm. no markings whatsoever on there. And, you know, mm. I already paid for it. So all that was done. So she just handed me this nondescript, don't make a big deal of this mm -hmm. type of a, of, of a bottle. May I ask, what did you give this on the nose? Five. So we found the caramel bomb. Uh, we knew it was rich and sweet. A uh, little bit of corn, a little bit of barley. And um, <laughs> I need to write vanilla on here because we... There's a, there's so much vanilla. Yeah, going on. it was like if you can imagine uh, an explosion of, of caramel and vanilla mm -hmm. happening, like in, in your favorite bourbon. And that's why I get a, a little bit it's of unexpected. butterscotch in there. Butterscotch, yeah, it was a it was a wow. It's a big wow, uh, just on the nose. And I was like, that's that's uh, I'm I'm in for an experience, right? And so if if you get a pour of this, you're gonna understand what we're talking about. And so uh, that's why that's why I gave it. I mean, we got we got four uh tasting notes that that we quickly identified and um at plus a wow and and then having such an elevation of that experience and flavor on each on each note mm -hmm. it's an easy five for me yep. easy five yep. uh how about the uh uh wait you said you gave it a five i gave it a five uh, how about the palette uh you know okay five I gave it a five. So did I, because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you started off with a wow with the vanilla and the caramel and uh, the the burst of honey that that we discovered was also in the notes. That's the thing with this bottle too is mm -hmm. yeah, you start off with a wow on the nose. Yeah, and you don't expect to have a wow in the other in well, the other parts. And, and that's the thing too is so. One, you never expect you never expect to have a wow experience with nose, palate, or finish, but when you get it. That's why you're wowed. You you weren't expecting that. I'm gonna ask us to take a pause and and and, and I want to step back a little bit because going going in, I'll allow it. Going into this, one, if you re, you remember when I took did the tour last year, yeah, because I I finished that tour and I and I'm texting you. I think the words were "holy shit, dude." I was just like, shit. yeah, my mind was blown. I found a ten. It, I, I that was last year, like I haven't seen and that was like the ten. That that was a mouse's mm -hmm. pour mm -hmm. uh, of of this. I, I was just blown yeah. away. And then you fast forward to this last tour, mm -hmm. and I'm hyping it up. And I'm like, dude, I'm having a full pour up in the bar, and wow. it's incredible. It it lives up to everything that I experienced the year before. Mm -hmm. It is incredible, and so and. This entire day, as, you know, we're sitting at work trying to get through the day. It's like, my God, I, I've got bourbon to get to. Will this right. day get over with? I'm writing cards, <laughs> looking at the clock, writing cards. Fuck, it's only been two minutes. Right, right. <laughs> right. And then you're talking at me. Is it bourbon thirty yet? And I'm like, thinking, hey, and so, so this whole day, I'm thinking, I want to leave, but I got bills to pay. <laughs> have I have I hyped this up so much that it's just not going to live up to what what I've been talking about? But then we get here and I'm just like, girl. Yeah, it's like show day. <laughs> I mean, you hype and you hype and so, you hype. You sell the show, yeah. you sell the show, you sell the show. And then when show day when show day comes and you're at the venue, like what happens happens. Right, like, so, so we get the, the nose. experience is gonna speak for itself no matter what. We get the nose and we're both wow. We both give it a five. Yeah, on the nose, which and, has and, that and, ever happened? And then, and so it, to me. I don't think it's ever happened. To me, that sets the stage for what the palette needs to be mm -hmm. to break even, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like after a five nose, the palette shows up above and beyond and earns its five. Yeah. Unquestionable. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's incredible. Um, to, to finish out our tasting notes, uh, we also noticed a touch of rye, mm -hmm. and we found that on the tongue because it gave a little bit of a, you know, that, that kind of pinch feeling on the tongue. Uh, and and the taste. Uh, actually, the, there is rye taste on this. It's not. Yeah. It's not the uh, not a malted rye, but like a the rye grain, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like a sweet rye grain, which is so good. Um, and uh, to finish it all off, it was just like a, a, a Kentucky mouth hug. Then we move 100%. in to the finish. What did you give it on the finish? The the finish is the one that I. I, I you debated on the most. The finish is always my. For lack of what else to call it, I, I feel like my, my finish is always my nemesis because okay. because okay. I, I get excited on the nose, I get excited on the palate, and then if it's a bad finish, I, I'm quick to to, mm -hmm. to to rate it such. Yeah. But even a great finish, uh -huh. I'm always just reluctant to push it up and mm -hmm. and and make it exceptional. A lot of times, I hyperanalyze the finish. Because we, we go through notes, we go through palate, and I want those flavors to linger. Right. I want them to be long and lasting, but like I don't want that burn to be there at the end of the finish. Your finish has a lot to live up to. Yeah. Yeah, especially after two fives. So you ask. I did ask. What did you come up with? And I gave it a five. You gave it a five. I gave it a five. This is the most perfect pour I've ever had in my life. This is this is a standard not to be met by any other bottle I, I can't imagine <laughs> i can't imagine there being a better bourbon than this and we've had we've well, had bookers after bookers and after that's bookers. that's the thing you know uh, i mean we had the baker seven we've had uh jim bean black you get it we've had so many bottles that were incredible how, this is a new standard for incredible with 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 all the hype that's around things like any of the Pappy's line, you know, there's, there's, uh -oh. there's a yeah. Pappy's 10 year, there's a Pappy's 15 year, Pappy's 18 family. year, there's a 23 and a, I think a 27 yeah. or 21 and a 27. There's a lot of Pappy's expressions. They're all ridiculously hard to find and even more ridiculously priced. I have a hard time after having this, I have a hard time even thinking how how could those even compete with mm -hmm. with this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, and, this? and this is a hard to find bot. This is this is a, a obvious hard to find in the Midwest bottle. I have not run across it, not had the opportunity locally to get it, other than staring it down at that tasting at, at Red X and then it be it snatched from my grasp hand. one number ahead of mine. But yeah. That's okay. I'm not mad because I got a 10 year rye back there that we're going to get to before too much longer. Very soon. Very soon. And we've both had it already as we a did. pour. It was, was a $10 pour that they offered. It's an amazing rye. Amazing rye. So, so for that tasting, we did the Michter's US1 bourbon, sour mash, American whiskey, and rye. Yeah, yeah, we still have our taster sheet. I, I, I think the American whiskey was the last one. So the, the but the third one was the rye. We yeah. got our ten year pour mm -hmm. and we held on to it. Mm -hmm. Did our maybe US, flash in the picture of the of the of the set? Here yep, real quick. yep. We did our US one single barrel rye mm -hmm. first, and then we interjected our ten year to do a rye to rye comparison, and we were both like, dude, hands down. Blows the yeah, blows the regular rye out of the water. It's However, that regular rye was really good. It was really yeah. good. And Raven, as she was talking, and everybody else was fucking talking through her presentation, um, which unfortunately for her, she said that was kind of commonplace. Yeah. Uh, when we were out at um, at, at Riggers afterwards, I was like, "Do you think Mictors would invest in like a a, a small like you know lapel mic and and speaker you know mm -hmm. kind of PA personal PA system?" And she kind of <laughs> laughed. She's like, "No." She laughed it off. She's like, "No, it's it's fine." I mean, you know, it, some places you go, everybody's listening, and some places you go and nobody's listening. Everybody's talking, and all you all you're there to do is just talk to. Um, you know, nobody in a full room, you know, that kind of thing. When we we're so, at when we were at the Derby at Churchill Downs on Father's Day, mm -hmm. our tour guide had one of those little pig nose okay. little, little yeah. clip on speakers on there, and then she had a head headset, so mm -hmm. she was hands free. But yeah, she had that thing, and she had it cranked. Mm -hmm. And were people talking? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, there were people kind of talking here and there or around there, but it wasn't bad uh, mm, or anything. Okay. But we were also outside because we were walking the outside. ground. We sound got to go down really to the. We got, well to, we got to go down to the racetrack. Yeah, sound does not carry well at all, mm -hmm. and just that mm -hmm. little bit helped her voice get up and over everything else. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, she said that uh, about their rye. Um, where is it? There it is. She said about the rye. Uh, uh, if you if you know anybody that is not a fan of rye, like specifically, like no, I just I just don't like rye. If you pour them this, like one of her favorite things to do was con to convert people to <laughs> to uh, to enjoying yeah. rye yep. on this bottle. And I would uh, I would agree. This is this is a great bottle for those that don't that are on the fence about rye or mm -hmm. say that they mm -hmm. don't like rye. Uh, we talked very it's easy early, drinking very early in the podcast. W two here was not a fan of rye, probably because yeah. he had a nasty pour and it was like, Ugh, oh my god. So like, if you compare this against uh, Bullet Rye, Bullet Rye is a completely different experience. Like, you want to talk about sour mash, kind of rot gut, but it comes out fist of cuffs. It's <laughs> it, it's throwing down, ready and raring to go. But this one here, it's just like, hey buddy, what's up? Fist bump. Let's mm -hmm. fucking rock and roll, dude. Let's take the stage now and that's what you do instant yep. rock star in a glass but yeah this um it's it's a great ride to start with but this bourbon here um if you give if you introduce somebody to bourbon with this bottle you're going to ruin them do not use this <laughs> as a first experience take um take a, an enthusiast like us and ruin their life with one pour Second nose is good. Second nose is good. Yeah, yeah, we haven't we haven't talked about second nose. We need to talk about bottle presentation. Bottle presentation. We talked about it a little bit before. It's got the it's got the. Uh, I did a lot of scribbling, mixers, and it's crossing got, out and, and refactoring and re re. I went back and forth on my bottle presentation. Did you? I did. It's got the mixers uh, barrel number uh, neck up here. Yep. You've got natural. So I don't need to open it and expose it to air again. But you got natural cork with a black topper dipped mm -hmm. in black. Wax, I almost did this. You don't want to see that. Leave it in. Family show. So, and then you've got a, a bit of information here on the back. Uh, we are proud to offer you our rare, rare, uh, 10 year old single barrel bourbon and the Michter's tradition hailing from one of America's first distillers, one of America's. So here they're, they're pulling a little, they're pulling the humility card online. They're like, nope, we're the first. Get over it. Yep. Don't like it. Change your mind. Uh, Michter's uh, tradition hailing from uh, one of America's first distilleries. This bourbon is made from the highest quality American corn and aged for 10 years in a hand-selected charred white oak barrel until it meets our exceptional quality standards. 100% agree with that. Um, it is then further mellowed by our signature filtration. What is their signature filtration? Oh. We talked about. I'm glad you uh, asked. We were talking about that uh, uh, during the during the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah the break during the limbo period between episodes and, and recording. I said, uh, you know, he was talking about all the great things that this mixer's bottle has to offer, and I <laughs> I, I started thinking. Now we have reviewed several other bottles that mm -hmm. were chill filtered, non chill filtered. Uh, there's un uncut, unfiltered. I'm very interested to hear what it is that Mictors does for their filtration process. Yeah, so the last episode we talked about uh, their toasting before charring. We mm -hmm. talked about uh, barreling at the lower 103 entry proof. Mm -hmm. We also talked a little bit about the heat cycling and all of their products are all single barrel or truly small batch whiskeys. But then they actually have their own signature filtration. We select the custom filtration protocol ideally suited to highlight the very best qualities of each of our whiskeys. At Michter's, our goal is not production efficiency, but rather to offer the greatest American whiskey. Instead of following a one-size-fits-all filtration approach with attractive cost savings, we thoughtfully select the different filtration mediums and techniques best suited to each of our individual whiskey offerings. This is time consuming and costly, but it allows us to highlight the very best qualities of each of our expressions. So they don't go into any details, proprietary mm -hmm. BS. Mm. Not BS, but you, you know what I mean. It's, it, yeah. it, you know, there's a they lot have of. to give you a little bit of runaround. Yeah. But I think that's cool because, I mean, I, I have to believe that in the filtration process, 
a lot of distilleries, most distilleries have multiple um, offerings, right? Mm-hmm. They'll have a bourbon, they'll have a rye, they'll have a single malt, they'll have these all these other expressions. You can almost guarantee their filtration system takes care of everything that passes through their distillery. For them to actually call out and say that they have a different filtration system for each of their expressions to ensure that it highlights the ingredients and the characters of that individual expression, I think that speaks volumes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This one here, the way it tastes, I can't imagine it being filtered much except through uh, just like maybe one pass through charcoal. But this yeah. doesn't it doesn't appear to have any sediment so it's not it's not uncut unfiltered well and and i just and i just I, and i, I just got they, this i wonder so, how to filter it yeah i just got this bottle so it has not gone through any climate fluxes mm-hmm. so i don't know so i mean it's it's only known air conditioning it's pretty clean it is very clean. It's super clear. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any sediment at the bottom. Uh, but again, back to that color. If we add water to it, which not going to happen. Dude, we uh, did. If we did we add did, water to it, but we didn't. We didn't even. I would entertain there, the idea. Of, I would expect there to be floaters. So I, I don't think it, it's uh, chill filtered. I don't think. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it is. So I, I just, I don't know how they got it so clear. So it's, it's. I, I'm willing to. You know, put a dollar on it and and bet that it's non chill filtered, and probably just passed maybe once through charcoal, probably as they dumped it out of the barrel. You, we've seen that they yep. they dump it in a bed yep. of a uh, you know charcoal yep. or whatever. To- Smoke wagon talked about that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Smoke you wagon. Know. They're I'm, unfiltered, uncut, uncut, unfiltered. I'm still working through but- that bottle of uh, Smoke wagon. Uh, uh, that your, that your lovely sister Faith and and brother in law Tim uh, gave me. Uh, how how cool was that? I mean, they're I I as I was drinking my second uh, old fashioned with it, I I sent your sister a message. I'm like, slide it in your DMs. Just wanted to say thank you to you know you in Tennessee. <laughs> thank you so much for this bottle. And she's like, yeah, totally cool. I'm like, I'm on my second. And then 20 minutes later, I'm like, I'm on my fourth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you knew her or not, but my sister's kind of a big deal. She's fucking rad ass. Yeah. And Tennessee's like cool as the other side of the pillow. Like nope. if he doesn't like something, he's going to let you know. It's like, ah, I'm not feeling this bottle. Sorry, guys. Sorry, not sorry. I'm sticking to it. That was the cool thing. So we're we're sitting up just thoroughly enjoying VIP life. As low up. as this is, like there's so much nose on here. Yeah. We're we're sitting up I'm starting in, to pick up some cereal. We're there. we're sitting on the top floor up in the bar. That's the name of Mictor's uh, top floor bar. The the bar. We're sitting up there enjoying ourselves. My first uh, drink that I ordered off the menu was just a f- straight pour of the ten year, and I let Faith and Tim both ha- have a sip of it. And they were both, they like did the double take. They're like, oh yeah. shit. They're like, that's not really bourbon. What is this? Yeah. I mean, they were both what really, is really blown away fluid. by it, which to me spoke a lot of volumes because like, like you said, Tim, Tim pulls no punches. He, he yeah. Yeah. If, if he doesn't like something, he's not afraid to, to, yeah. Score it down, <laughs> and he won't even play it nice like uh, you, me, or even Chandler will be. Um, he'll, yep. He won't say words like uh, eh, "it's not my favorite." He's just like, "No, I don't like that one." No. <laughs> and he's cool about it, like he's not being a dick about it. But he's just, you know, he'll just let you know what he thinks. Yeah, when, when we did that uh, that revolver cocktail, yeah, he, yeah, he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm throwing this down the sink," <laughs> which was surprised. <laughs> I me think Faith stepped in and, and revolver took we it had from was pretty him, good, but, but it was. Um, <laughs> It, think it had something to do with the ingredients. Like yeah. they had. Well, he's not a coffee fan. Not a coffee fan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Faith loved it, but she's also she yeah. loves her coffee. Mm-hmm. And I love coffee too. Thanks to uh, Miss Katie, I've uh, I've gone to the land of um, uh, caffeine free coffee. Uh, what do they call it? Decaf. Thanks to Miss Katie, I've gone to the land of decaf coffee, and it used to be 
it used to be death before decaf, you know, all oh, day, yeah, every day. Yeah. But then, like, when my heart started acting fucking weird, I was like, ah, I don't know what I should do. Maybe I should cut out the caffeine, which was half a pot of coffee in the morning, a monster, maybe two in the afternoons. And then, like, maybe by the time or like, uh, like post lunch would be a monster. Mm -hmm. And then after, uh, after about three or four o'clock, I'd fire up the coffee pot again and have a, a cup or two of coffee. So, you know, judge me if you want. I don't care. That's just what my average day of, uh, coffee, of caffeine intake would be thereabouts. And so, like, I went from that to absolute zero. Uh, and I swear to you, I thought I was on the wrong planet. It felt <laughs> like humanity was in a fucking hurry <laughs> constantly. And I was like, there's, why is it, where's the fire? Everybody, everybody, everybody just calm down. I couldn't keep up. Like, I mean, everybody's jacked up on, on five hour or, you know, three hour energy drinks, little shots. Five, or is hour. It five hour, five, five hour. hour energy yep. shots, um, monster energy, coffee, fucking, you know, uh, Adderall, you know, whatever. Like everybody's like <laughs> grinding their teeth all the time. And I'm like, huh? And then, yeah, the whole world's moving around me so damn fast. But, you know, at least I can feel like I'm part of the rat race by drinking coffee yeah. at, at decaf. Yeah. So thanks to your wife for uh, cluing me in to, as to why in the hell somebody would ever su subject themselves to decaf coffee. Mm -hmm. Now I know. Yep. And my sister, God bless her, uh, she, she will take decaf coffee and then water it down. Okay. I don't understand you, Angie. I don't have to understand you to love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Angie. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we... Well, back from our tangent. Yeah, we need to talk about bottle presentation. I gave it a five. What did you give it? So yeah, I I, I, I arm wrestled with, with this one because, yeah. but, you know, I mean, we talked about, you know... Is it bagged? Is there a bag? Box? Is there a box? Is there, you know, all these things? And the answer is no. But it's wax dipped. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have a a, a hand label. signed uh, barrel number on there. It is a unique bottle. It is a unique bottle, and it's it's a unique bottle to the rest of mm -hmm. their offering. Not as unique as like a Crown Royal bottle, right? I mean, as basic fucking shit liquid that you can get out of Crown Royal is the, it's the, super unique bottle. The labels are super cool. I love the use of the red. Uh, in their single barrel, seventeen fifty three, ten year. Yeah, it um, plays off the red, the red amber color of the juice. I and, and yeah, so so I went back and forth, and there for a minute, I was just like, you know what, this is where I'm going to have to ding them because it, got, there's it's no. It's got it's got like the the torn label on the outside, but it's also it a textured um, like cork. Yep. It looks like cork on the back of the label. Yeah, you know, I was like, I'm like, this is where I'm going to ding them. For the uh, their presentation because there's no box, there's no bag, there's no yeah. all these other things. But That's then I was, I thought was but then I was like, you know what? The more I think about it. I'm like, you know what? I like it. The more I think it's a great bottle, and it 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 sets itself apart from the standard offering. Mm -hmm. I gave it a five. I did too. For all those reasons that you wrestled with and came to, I was immediately on it. I didn't really have to think about it too much because I'm just that more advanced. I'm not, <laughs> but, but yeah, we, uh, as we were looking at the bottle during the, uh, during the, during the episode, we said, yeah, it's shouldered flask, but it's rounded too. So yeah. it's like, it's a hybrid between yeah. the shoulder you know, flask and, and, you know, a la West Bottoms whiskey company and, 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 a, and, a, and a wine. And also, you know, we, we, we've talked about thick base. I like that. Typically we don't knock, knock anything for a composite cork. You no, know, we don't. We uh, don't. Composite cork. I prefer real, natural really cork, gives a, a, a better, better seal. Better it's seal. Going to be better for a longer period of time. But we both appreciate and like a natural cork mm -hmm. for that natural element mm -hmm. to it, because we know that it's if, an old school way to do it. If, if for some dumb reason that bottle ends up on its side and it has a composite cork, yeah. Well, that composite cork is going to add some flavors. Uh, that you don't really want in your bourbon. A cork is not going to do that. A cork, however, if left on its side mm -hmm. at the proof that whiskey typically is, the whiskey will eat the cork. So I mean, it, it's it a will. it's about and it will it will mess up. It will ruin the juice itself. Yeah. All that said, uh, as much as we love our bookers and as much as we give the bookers presentation a five because yeah. it is in a box. It is wax dipped, mm -hmm. all those things. It, it you pull that wax uh, rip cord off of there, mm -hmm. and it's a composite cork. 
You yeah. pull this rope cord, and that's a natural cork under natural there. Natural cork. I, I like natural cork, so I ain't mad at it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That second nose. Second <laughs> nose. Yeah, I was just, oh, my God. <laughs> right? That second nose is the most incredible second nose I think we've encountered. Yeah. Nose is like honey, all caps, three underlines. And it's like uh, wood smoke. Mm -hmm. It's. Mm -hmm. I'm getting. There's a, even a touch of caramel. I'm getting like a like a like a like a heavy cream. Heavy cream. A honey heavy cream cereal grains. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is like a, the the this is like the, the the Canaan of of second noses, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> I mean. This is worth wandering in the desert for 40, 40 years. <laughs> so, so, oh, Israelites. <laughs> so, so if I'm correct, and I'm remembering all of our scores correctly, my total ended up a solid 10. I think yours ended up... A solid 10. That gives us an aggregate score. <clears throat> Oh, a perfect 10. A perfect 10. Like, have we ever had a perfect 10? Nope. Nope. Guess what's at the top of the list? Michter's 10-year bourbon. Single barrel. I, I cannot believe how good this is. So would this uh, would this be your, your top bourbon of ever? This is both of our top bourbons of ever. All right. So I said uh, all points of taste and style maxed out to a production of perfection. This bottle is perfection in a glass. Worth every dollar at MSRP, this bottle is our top bottle of any bourbon ever. I'll drink to that. Mm, I think we I did. did. I think we did. <laughs> I think we did. This is absolutely amazing. So, guys, yeah. if you can find this uh, anywhere, I mean, first of all, good luck finding it. Second of all, uh, congratulations if you found it. Yeah. And, um, and uh, if it's for a decent price. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't like we said, MSRP it. is right at about right at about two hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, second market can be four to five hundred. Uh, I don't. I couldn't. I I couldn't yep. go four to five hundred. Uh, Bruce will probably could. I don't think he would. But um, he wouldn't know what he's missing if he hasn't had it before. Yeah. Um, if he has, please uh, send us that episode because I'd love to hear what uh, uh, what he had to say about it. But uh, it's not about him. It's about us, and it's about you. So no matter who you are, where you are. What you're drinking, if it's this or if it's everything else inferior, never forget. Keep on, Keep on burning. burning.